I believe we all can see my screen now. So of course I can read your messages. Yes, 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 I can see my screen, all right. So um, everything that I'll be sharing tonight, right, it's going to take us like, let's say, I'll walk within an hour, so that's 16 minutes, to try to finish everything I have to share in the first, in the first day of the class. So I'll just present, I'll just present my slide here. As I said, please help me mute your mic, ensure that your mic is muted um, so that I will not go through the stress of trying to unmute people, right? So just help me do that, especially the guys from Google Meet. Google Meet is a very funny application. You can actually unmute everybody at once, just like unlike what you can do on, um, on, on Zoom, right? So just help me do that. So these are all we have to share. So in two days, I'll be going through all of this thing from the point of view of a UI UX designer, more especially a UI designer. So today I should be covering the main um, L, uh, uh, basic design principles from alignment, contrast, balance, emphasis, proportion, hierarchy, repetition, white space, unity, and variety. But before we start, I'll just give a brief introduction of myself. My name is Samuel Linus. Uh, I'm a full stack developer. I'm a digital marketer and I'm a product designer as well. I also happen to be the founder of Nedi. I don't know if any one of us here have heard of Nedi I before, but if you have, um, I also happen to be founder of Nedi I. And at Nedi I, we are currently building a community platform that will help people join online tech communities that will also help people create online tech communities as well and we are projected to launch um, in two three months time so that being said that was a basic notion of myself for those of us who don't know me i'll just go ahead and share what i have right i'll just go straight to the point i really hate google me because i have to like basically do these things all right so I will start and go straight to the points immediately. For me. All right. So the first thing I have here is what are design principles, right? So design principles are a set of rules or guidelines designers observe to create visually appealing designs. In most cases, they are combined creatively to create an appealing user interface. Um, there are several principles, but we'll cover 10 basic principles, right? And, and that's and that of some of UI elements. So we have of UI elements to cover that tomorrow, but today we'll just focus on the 10 basic design principles. So on a layman terms, design principles help designers, uh, more or less graphic designers, not necessarily UI designers in this context, in this sphere of influence in terms of product designing, right? So design principles is brought from graphic design that it helps designers to design appealing um, visuals, right? Appealing designs, basically, right? So as UI designers, we deal with our, our, our visual designs too, right? Because these are the applications, these are things that users will interact with, we interface with, right? So when you go on Google right now and you search for design principle, you can actually do that as you're in the class. If you search for design principle, of, of course, you're going to see a lot of materials, but the, most of the materials that you're going to see will be giving you an example that has to do with graphic design, right? You, it will take you time. It will be difficult a little bit to find um, good materials on design principles that is actually talking about UI design principles, so to say. But in this class, every of the design principles that I'll be covering, I'll be covering in respect to UI design. So I'm hoping that at the end of today's class, um, if you observe these principles in your next project, you should be able to increase your UI skill, let's say times 10, right? Times 10 of your UI skill. Now, being someone that I've trained, I've trained a lot of people in Nedi, at Nedi, I we train people as well. So this, this particular slide I'm presenting is just like, it's an excerpt from Nedi I course, right? So if you take like the Nedi UI design um, uh, class, for example, you pay for it and you enroll for it, you're going to see something like this in it as well, right? So one of the major errors for beginners that are just starting their careers as UI UX designers, they face, um, they face issues with design principle. They ask me, they ask me, I'm review my design, 
And when I go through their design, one of the first thing I always see is the fact that um, is the fact is it is the fact that they have little, little issues with either alignment, either balance, and so on and so forth. So I will just go ahead and start to talk about these things one after the other as we proceed in this particular class, right? So they are basic, then these principles are basically guidelines that ensure that if you follow them, you're going to have an appealing design. Now we're going to take we're going to take a look at the 10 basic design principles that we have out there. So once we take a look at that, then we can actually just fire on. So the first one that we have here is alignment, right? So alignment is a very, very popular one. Alignment means the arrangement of various items in relation to the various borders or edges of the allowable area, right? It is a way to create a connection and visual flow between related objects and create a more unified results in the design. So we have like two basic type of alignments you can ever talk about. We have the vertical alignment and we have the horizontal alignment. Now, of course, I have my slide here prepared inside of Figma. I would go ahead and use Figma to demonstrate this alignment. So it's one thing to say, tell that, okay, this is alignment, this is alignment. Now, one of the errors I've seen with, in several designers, especially beginners, is the fact that some of their design, they don't put alignment under consideration. Please help me mute, or mute, mute your mic. Help me mute your mic, especially if you're on um, Google Meet. If you're on Google Meet, take a look at your mic. If your mic is not muted, mute it to avoid um, disturbance, to avoid noise, so that people joining from um, um, Zoom will not be having that issue, issue as well. So back to what we are talking about, alignment. So we have like two basic type of alignment, the vertical alignment, as you guys can see it, and the horizontal alignment. And it is really, really just here. I don't know why sometimes people always forget it. So I'm going to try to implement alignment the way I do it whenever I'm working on a project as a UI designer. So this is the first thing I do. So let's say I'm working on a mobile application. Once I select my mobile frame here, I go to my tablet over here, or my phone over here, sorry. I love using the 375 by 812. So this is really cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is to understand my layout, right? So if you go to Google right now, and probably you search for iPhone um, UI layout, you're going to see something and you click on the image section of Google and um, you scroll down a little bit. Let us, I'm looking for anyone that would look like something that is more that I'm looking for. Uh, something like this, but not really this. Looking for the one that I have that will have more detail. I have it on my desktop. All right, I'm looking for something like this. Perfect. So you see this iPhone UI layout. It's let me just let me just copy this image, copy image, and I'll bring it to this my material here, and I will just paste it. Perfect. All right. So if you take a look at this stuff that we just got from Google right now, if you take a look at it clearly, right? You realize that it's already showing us how our layout, how we should basically partition our design before we start designing on this particular 375 by 812 frame, if we are actually designing for mobile application. And you can see that the first 44 points is for status bar. The left and right margin is 16 points. The um, home indicator where no design will cover is 34 points. Then our tab bars, navigation should be 49 points. So the first thing I would do is basically try to create those uh, points here. So I, we will use rule to ensure that particular alignment. Now, why I'm saying this thing is how do we really implement alignment? I don't, just, I don't just want to go through the principle and say this is what the principle means without you implementing it. So the aim of this course, because I believe you can find that easily on Google. If you go on Google and design, um, design principle, I believe you're going to see something that is good but you might not see something that is implementable in terms of when you are working on a project. So when I'm working on a project, I will come over here. I will use my rule, of course, you see your rule here. If your rule is not turned on, I think Sheets R should be able to turn on your rule inside of your Figma, or you go to um, view, I believe, then you see rule as here, you can turn it on if you cannot see your rule. So once I pick my rule here, I come over here, you could see my sign here showing me, I can look for 16. And I will just drop it there. Let me zoom in a little bit. See, I'll drop it there. So I have my 16 left and right. Over here to holding alternate, I'm coming. If you want that other side to show, you want to ensure that the frame is being selected, then you stretch your wood. Oh, this is my nail. 
disturbing me. All right. Uh, uh, what's this now? I'm coming, guys. What's little? So I will hold this. I will hold. Coming. I will drag this now. I will hold alternate. You could see that it's showing me the other side. So I will drop it at 16. Sometimes this thing can be funny. I'll drop it at exactly at 16. All right. I think I have it there. So sometimes, again, if you're having issues, to really, really place this through. Sometimes it's funny on Figma. You can easily just draw like a rectangle here and give it a width of 16. And um, you want to bring it and just place it by the edge. Then the rule, the rule can easily just snap there. All right. Let's use this method to get our stuff. All right. This is 16. Then the next thing that we have now, we'll also have like 44 up. So I used to use rectangle like this sometimes if I don't want issues. So I have 44, I'll just place it here. Then I can easily snap my rule here. I have another 44 too here. I snap my rule here. So if you're thinking I'm getting it from, I'm just doing this stuff here. So if you look at this one tab on that, they're telling us that we should measure 34 and 49. So let's do that. So 34 and 49. So I'm just preparing my documents for, so I'll just say 34 here. I'm preparing my documents for design. So I'll drag it down. I'll put it here. All right. I'll also drag this one down too. I'll put it here as well. So I have my 34. So no design will come under this particular area, right? No design will come this particular area because it's meant for my home indicator. Then of course, we know tab by, you know when you go to any mobile application, all those menus you see are um, horizontally like this. So based on this particular layout, it's advising us to make this stuff 49, the height of it 49. So you don't just give it any height you feel like giving it. So the recommended height is 49. So I could just have that here. So I have it here, so I can do away with this now. My system is hanging a bit somehow. All right, so I have this. Um, I have done my first alignment in a way because with this rule now, I know that anything I'm designing is going to fall under this particular safe area. Now take a look at this stuff. So we have our safe area here. This particular area here is the safe area that they, that they mentioned Yes, so I can delete this now, I no longer need this anymore. Then just in case you want to get it, just go on Google, search for iPhone UI layouts. Probably you're going to see something I saw too as well. And you can also use that for sake of memory. Now, once you have something like this, now, if you take a look at this stuff, and they, they told us that we have like two basic alignment, the vertical alignment and the horizontal alignment. Where do you find it? So let's try. So if I draw a rectangle here now, right? And I duplicate this, and let's just change the color to something, and just give it a different color, and probably make it smaller. And I want two rectangles now. So once I have it like this, if I select both of them together, like this, and I come over here, you will see all your alignments here. Everything here aligns it, um, uh, uh, align it to the left, to that the particular horizontal alignment center. So this will give me horizontal alignment center, right? This horizontal. So this will allow me to also align my stuff together. Then if I do this too, this will align me vertically and the rest. Now you might be wondering, you might be wondering, I'm asking myself, Sam, okay, in real design, where do all of these things come to play? Where do beginners actually get it from? Now, I will show you in actual design where the beginners get it from. So let's take a look at, um, let's see if I have something here. So let's take a look at this. Ah, uh, Now, if I zoom in a little bit, take a look, look at this card inside like this particular design. Now, if this spot, this spot, the Nike and the price don't fall under one particular line like this, the design will look cliche. Now you could see that line. You could see that the sports, Nike, and class, they align to the left and they all fall under the same alignment. If they don't fall under the same alignment, you will see that something uh, I will not be right about the design. So as, as a beginner, you might just think, okay, let me just put it anywhere like that. And you don't align those texts to the left. It might actually give you issues. Now we have other rules that will enable you to have like good alignment as well. For example, I used to give people this tool. If you have your image to the left, let your text be aligned to the right. If you have your image to the right, let your text be aligned to the left. Now, what do I mean? Let me go to this post an example. You will see where I implemented here. These are all the stuff I was posting on social media. 
For example, and let's take a look at this design. Now, this is a, another design that has to do with alignment. You could see that this image is, is to the left. So now my text here can be aligned to the right. So my text now can be aligned to the left. Of course, this is the right way to design hero. In rare cases, where you will see heroes that are probably like this. Let me, let me duplicate this. So if I duplicate this like this, and um, so let's say this particular hero now, let me select everything here and I'll bring it to this point, right? So this is another rule of alignment. Again, I'll put it here again. Now you could see that I'm also observing that particular margin by this side. Ensure that this home and this um, um, image here actually have the same alignment. Now this is another rule now. But the rule states that if your text is aligned to the left, let your image be by the right. If your image is by the right, let your text be by the left, right? And if your image is centralized, for example, I want to centralize this particular image. So let's test another one. Let me, let me just increase this for sake of emphasis. So if I draw this now and increase this image a little bit, sorry, I'm going to um, stop this design a little bit. And uh, let me try to stretch that image that's covering it to cover it a little bit. Okay, so let's assume that this was the original size of this image and I will choose to align it to the center of it. So based on the principle of alignment, this my text now needs to be what centralized. And this my text in here too as well, need to be centralized. And this line here, I will delete it. Then this, what, what happened I have here, I need to centralize it together for me. This and this now, I need to find the way to ensure that this button is to the middle of everything. Then um, let me, this particular stuff has its own, uh, where, is that, where is that button? All right, let me pick it up. All right, so this stuff should look like this. Of course, this stuff is not really fine. Let me stretch it a bit. So I want to align everything like this, select them together, centralize them. And um, so this other one I is spacing. All right, so I could select my entire group now. This stuff is a group. And I want to ensure that it's also aligned to the center of everything, then I could have something like this. So something like this as well, also goes to as well, because I'm not settling down to do this design. All right, so this is another one too. So these are three different ways you could align stuff, right? So if your image aligns to the left, your text to the right, your text to the right, so your image to the left, then if the image is centralized, the text too should also be centralized. So one thing you don't want to do in your design is, in terms of alignment is, you don't want to align your text to the left, left, and then your uh, image to the right, and your text to the right as well. It might not really work for you. Now, I want to ask you guys, I think I, I made a post on Twitter before this, that, that should be about like um, 20, 30 minutes ago before I came online. If you take a look at this very well, you realize that uh, between this design and this design, I will ask a question, which of this design do you think is right? Let's, let's say this one is A and this one is B. Between A and B, which of these design do you think is right? And which do you think is, is not right? So let's see. Just, just answer the question and let me know. And uh, I will read it. I will just, you can just use the comment section. I'll be reading the comment both from Zoom and Google Meet, right? So someone is saying B. If it is B, why B? If it is B, why B? If it is A, why A? And give me the reason because I'm going to tell you guys my own reason, the one I think is more, more accurate and why. Right? All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 All right. I got it. Oh. <laughs> we'll find that you're actually right. So so um you so you're actually right. B is more accurate. Now, from the technical point of view, 
Now, you might just be looking at it without observing the same principle, like, okay, based on what my eye is telling you, B is right. But I will tell you what why B is right from design principle point of view, from the principle of alignment. Now, um, if you look at this and this, first and foremost, I made everything a group to, say, to ensure that they are going to operate as one element. Now, since that, since there is a group, just only one thing I need to correct this design. Now, a beginner designer might just leave the design like this and say, look, I am correct, right? I uh, have nothing to add again. And be looking at me now. I'll be looking at something is missing about design and it's just vertical alignment. If I select this group now as one element, I select this image as one element, I just need to come over inside of my Figma and say align vertically center. Once I do that now, it is aligning to the image. So now it is aligning to the image, vertically centered, aligned to this particular image that is by the right. So and just by um, making that adjustment, align it properly, I have a more perfect design than what I had before, than if it is aligned this other way, right? So this is me, I'm not just using my eye to ensure that the design is right, but also ensure that I'm using my alignment to ensure that this particular design is right. And that is why B is more accurate design than actually A. That's just it. Alignment is the reason why. So let's go back to our principles. We've just discussed just one principle on alignment. Now, next time when you are designing, you want to ask yourself, which like, is my, um, is my design well aligned? All the elements inside of my design, are they well all aligned inside your card? Are the text aligned properly? Instead of your hero balls, are they vertically aligned properly? Are they horizontally aligned properly? And of course, they are divided into two and you can align it vertically top, vertically center, or vertically bottom, or horizontally left, horizontally center, and horizontally right. So it depends on what you're doing. For example, if you look at what we did, we align it vertically center to ensure that we have more perfect visually appealing design that is balanced to the eye. Now, the second design principle that we have here based on what we are discussing about is contrast. So contrast is, a, is the difference in luminance or color that makes an object distinguishable. In visual perception of the real world, contrast is determined by the difference in the color and the brightness of the object. And all of this is a big, big English. Let me just explain contrast in, in a layman's term. So contrast does ensure that people can read and see things more inside of your design, right? So you don't want to make a design whereby uh, a text is not readable or one certain thing that you want people to see well, they are not saying it's well. That means it has what? Bad contrast. Is that clear, guys? Right? So if you are designing, you want to ensure that you have the right contrast. And it's just two rules that you just need to observe. Just two rules, two principles that you need to have to observe to have a perfect contrast. The first principle is that you want to have a white foreground on a dark background. I think I already explained this. If you guys are following me on Twitter, and uh, let me go back to my post and examples. If you're following me on Twitter, I think I made this particular post, this particular tweet. I just prepared it here and tweeted. So I said that you want to have a light background on, you want to light a light foreground on the, on the, light, on the dark background. Now, somebody once sent me a button that looks like this. I'll give you an ideal button now. Apart from the example you guys saw on Twitter, so I'll give you guys an example. I would do this. I will probably give blue, give this particular button blue. I once saw this somewhere. So, or uh, someone sent me and said, some more um check my design. And I saw a button that looks like this. Let me just call this one by now. By now. So the guy did, I can't remember if it's a guy or a lady, just permit me to use guy. So the guy did something like this. Let me give this medium and did button, well aligned button, stuff like this. So, and the color of the button on top of that blue text is like black. Okay, I think the, 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 the text is not really this blue. This is not even blue, this is like purple. So the text is something like this. Let me look for that shade of blue. So the text is like this, something like this. I can't really remember clearly, but something that looks like this, right? But a very dark text. Now, of course, we could tell that something is wrong about this button. True or false, guys? Right? True or false, guys? Something is wrong about this particular button. And what is wrong about this particular button is what? Contrast, right? Because the background is what? Dark. And the text is also dark. 
So you don't want to ensure that your background is dark and and the foreground, the foreground is basically if it's anything on top of the text, it's also dark. So if you have issues like this, you what you just need to solve is to correct one. Is either the text becomes white, lighter, or it's a better contrast. Please help me on a mute your mic. Help me on a mute your mic. Whenever you're not saying anything, just help me. I say on mute, mute your mic. Sorry. So just help me mute your mic whenever you're not saying anything. Huh? Help me and do that so that we can have. Okay. Let me do it myself. All right. Okay. Please mute since, your mic. Oh. Since the person don't, I've done it myself. All right. So uh, once we have this kind of button, it is well done. Now let's 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 take a look at it now. Another way to the text could, could also be black, but if the text is black, the background should not be this should should not be uh uh this should be a little bit lighter. So this is how we used to have this kind of text. Who have seen this kind of buttons that looks like this? Same color, but different shade. Same color, uh, but different shade. Let's, um, let me select that text itself. Okay. Same color like this could still be blue, but now I will have it a little bit darker, but the button will be like this. Same color, different shade. Now, you guys must have seen stuff like this, right? Same color, the button is a little bit lighter. I will use the button text a little bit. All right, okay. I think I have to mute this thing myself, sorry. Mute or allow participants to unmute themselves, no. All right, this will work perfectly. All right, so. I have this, I don't know if it, if it happens with you guys, whenever you're in a meeting and somebody mic is on and there's background noise, it affects my brain somehow. I will be unable, to, I will not be able to concentrate, right? So please guys, help me, huh? Just help me and ensure that your mic is on me. There's especially Google Meet that I cannot um, um, forcefully mute everybody. Unlike Zoom, yeah, I can actually do that. That would be the advantage of Google Meet. All right, so, um. So I'll proceed. So with this now, you could have like good contrast, right? Light background on, on, on um, light bar. If the background is light, the foreground should be dark. If the foreground is dark, the background should be light. And let's take a look at this example. Now you could see these two examples. The image behind it is light. So the text that should be coming top of the image should not be what? Light again. The, tech, the image is already light. So if I want to write a text, design your dream home, it should be what? Dark. Now that's why you could see on B now, the image is now what? Dark. So if I say A and B, which one is more correct? Of course, B is more correct because now the text now is more readable. Design your dream, dream home is more readable on B compared to what? A, where design your dream home is light. Now, of course, you might design it accurately without you, without you knowing there's a principle that actually guides you to do that. But just in case, at least with this principle, you should be able to know this. Now, the second rule again is, if your choice of image is what? Is something like this, it's busy. The background is busy. It's not empty. Whereby there'll be a lot, because if the image is busy, there'll be distraction, right? For example, there's so many flowers in this particular image. I could see the lampstand, there's a sofa that I have orange color and so on and so forth. Even though I make my text dark and the image a little bit dark too as well, you could see that it is fighting for my attention, right? It is fighting for the user's attention between this and this. And that is why I have to come up with a way to solve this. I will have to add an overlay that is a little bit darker and make this particular image what lighter. Now, I also said that this particular approach for creating car in terms of UI design is very, very good. When you are designing an element whereby the users themselves will be the one uploading images. Now, if you go to any application where there is a text on top of any image, and the users are allowed to up upload that particular image, you realize that an overlay will definitely be used because you cannot tell, the user can upload anything they feel like uploading. So to ensure that that particular text of that image would always be readable, you have to use overlay. Anyhow that you want to put it, you have to use overlay. Now, I will show you in a real life design where I implemented it. So there is this e-commerce design right now, and I'm designing this e-commerce design, and this is a simple card for subcategories, right? 
And I know that, okay, I don't really know the kind of image the owner of this website or the users might actually upload as the background image for these categories. So because I don't know that some of it might be plain, some of it might be dark. So I have to come up with a strategy to ensure that no matter what, the, no matter the type of image, the text that is the category title and the product will always be readable. I have to introduce an overlay. Now this overlay is a gradient overlay that fades up to become white. Right? I don't want the overlay to cover the entire image. So now I had to create an overlay and make the overlay black, a gradient overlay that fades to become 100% um, um, uh, transparent. And by so doing, my fashion or my text on top of this particular card will always be readable no matter the kind of image that is serving as the background. No matter how busy or empty the image is, that particular image will always be readable to the user. Is that clear, guys? Yeah, you can drop a comment. Don't unmute your mic, except when I ask you guys to unmute your mic, please. Right? So that is how you implement contrast. So let's take a look at the next design principle. So for contrast, I mentioned two things. Number one, ensure that if the background is dark, the foreground is light. Or if the foreground, if the background is light, the foreground is dark. Number two, if the background is busy or has a conflicting image that is dragging for the user's attention, use overlay to bring more visibility to the text that is coming on top of that particular image to ensure that you have an amazing contrast. Number two, number three things I, I don't mention on my slide there is a plugin called the A11Y contrast checker. So let's use that as that plugin. For example, you are designing, you have two texts, you love to use gray. And you want to ensure, for example, these two cards, now you could tell that I have, the second card here, I have the issue of what? Contrast, right? The second card, people cannot really, really read the text because the text is really, really light. But let's say, I don't really know if my frame have the right contrast. Then I will install a Figma plugin that will help me do that. Let me check if someone is trying to enter. I will install a Figma plugin that will, of course, help me achieve that. Now, what is the plugin? The plugin name is called the a 11 y contrast checker so i'll go to plugin you see the plugins here a 11 y contrast color contrast checker so just in case you don't have this particular plugin on figma you want to try it so now for you to use this particular plugin is very simple so let's the design frame that you want to check once the design frame that you want to check you're able to click this particular button called check now if i click this particular button called check this plugin is going to check and, and you're going to tell me that look your contrast is not right, right? Two errors found in your Figma frame. Then if I go ahead and adjust this contrast to the left or to the right, you see it's making the text darker for me. All of this stuff will become green. If I, you see that I adjust the text, I adjust the background, one of the two. So I can adjust the text to become darker, then it becomes green. Then now I have an amazing contrast there. So this particular plugin will help you fix your contrast issue inside of your design, right? So you want to use the plugin to check if your design is actually accurate. So let me control Z. Uh, okay, let's check the second one now. Okay, let, let's control Z this. Perfect. Let's run the plugin again, right? Click plugins, A11 one contrast checker. So let's see the second one. So, but if it's like the one that is right and you click on check, it will just tell you amazing all text meets AAA color contrast requirements, right? So you want to use this particular plugin to check if you have the right contrast inside of your design. So that's that about contrast, right? So three things I mentioned about contrast. Now the third thing I want to take a look at is balance, right? So we have like several balance as design principle. Well, of course, this design principle covers both graphic design and UI design, of course. So balance, what are the principle of balance? So balance is the distribution of the visual weight of objects, colors, texture, and space. If the design was a scale, this element should be balanced to make a design feel stable. Now, have you ever been looking at a design and it feels like everything is tilting towards the left or something is tilting towards the right? And it's like something is not just... Um, uh, good about the design. The design is not what the design is not balanced. I'll, I'll show you guys real real case scenario in terms of a design that is not balanced. Now, let's say in this my post an example that I always used to give example. I wasn't able to design a lot of examples, uh, but I did a couple. For example, apart from the fact that this design in terms of alignment is accurate, I could look at this design and say something about this design is not balanced. It's look as if something is missing, right? That means 
this probably this um, white space that is there seems too much. And it's just that the design is too empty. There is no design that is done yet. How can I make this design more balanced? And I came up with a concept. Okay, let me fill the missing space. I will go up and I will introduce more. This, this is a typography. Um, it's also a trending, uh, I'm trying to call this typography trend too as well. One of the trending UI design. So I make my typography. Now this, this text I put in here, it's not an information that I want the user to see. But it's an information that is actually is a, is a design that's actually making this particular design more balanced. So now, if you take a look at this design, so if this is A and B, B is more accurate than A in terms of alignment, but C is more accurate than B in terms of what? Balance. So now, will you guys agree with me? Okay, let me see. Do you guys agree with me? Okay, these guys are saying, yeah, in terms of what balance, right? So let's 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 check these guys from this other end. Oh, I say, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Someone said, I don't really understand. I don't really understand in terms, yes, in terms of balance. Yeah, in terms of balance, of course. So when I when me as a designer now, I want to design visually appealing design. So at the end of the day, I took a look at the design. Okay, I have my navigation bar, I have my text, everything's well aligned, but I'm still feeling off. So when you look at your design and you're still feeling off, as if something is not correct, definitely something is not correct. Probably that design is not balanced. Now, let me create an intentional error, right, of a design that will not be balanced. So if I click on this particular frame now, right, and I come over here and I turn on my layer grid, now look at it. Now, this grid, that we have two types of, um, of, of, of balance. We call it the symmetric balance and the asymmetric balance. Uh, okay, later on, you, can, you guys can Google those things out. We have the symmetric balance and the asymmetric balance. So, this, the, so the symmetric balance simply means when you are dividing a row into columns or into, into columns, the row should be what? Equal, of course, symmetric. Simply means the left should be equal to the right, right? So now, if I want to make something, if I make this, I just draw this shape. Now, this I increase this width to any point I feel like increasing it. And this text is like this. And even if I align it like this, and um, let's let's take a look at this now. Let me let me hide this my uh, layout again. Now, something that will be going on in your head. Something else is more balanced here again. Of course, the alignment is proper well aligned vertically center to the image by the left, but something is not right. The image by the left is eating too much space that it shouldn't eat. And now this design now is not asymmetric, it's not symmetric, right? So that means design is not what? Balanced. Again, you see, you see what I'm trying to say? So the design is not balanced. They might be looking at design, something is still wrong about the design. What is wrong is that design is not balanced. Is that clear? Now, that is why for you to create that other balance that has to do with symmetric and asymmetric balance, you want to make use of what? Your layout grid. Of course, you guys must have heard of layout grid, of course. Let me control Z, control Z. All right. Uh, let me select this frame. And um, of course, you must have heard of layout grid system, eight point grid system. It depends on your level in terms of UI design. But um, there's some from the call grid system, the recommended industry counts for column grid system is 12, right? You see me using 12. If you are coming from the front end, if I have a front end background, probably bootstrap, you know that bootstrap also use a column count of 12 for each individual row. So this allows us to create perfect balance, right? So now, um, if, if you, uh, what, what profile will I use? If you ever visited LinkedIn, okay, even, even now the Figma as a user interface, Right, you could see that this particular workspace and this and this uh, property bar on my right side bar and this my um, tool bar or layer bar, side bar by my left, they are balanced in such a way that the the size here and the size here is equal. Right, this particular area here and this particular area here is is equal, and this the workspace is eating a perfect space. It's taking up a perfect space that makes the left and the right side bar equal. Right, this is also a clear example of both symmetric and asymmetric balance. So, if I want to create that, I want to always count my columns. So, I want to show that this image, if I'm binding it by two, 
I want to ensure that this image by the left will not eat up more than 12 six column counts, which is 12 divided by two. I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so if I want it to be asymmetric balance, and I still want it to be correct, such a way that both of them will not be equal, but it will still be balanced. So I want to divide it in such a way that it's either the left is nine, and the right is nine, and the left is three. So if I increase this by nine, or I want to do, you can do nine, three, you can do eight, four, you can do seven, five, right? So you want to divide it according to the column. So you don't just want to just draw something anyhow instead of your design. You want to divide it according to the column or the grid system that you are working with. And that is why you see most people always work with grid system that is always even numbers that can be divisible by two without any reminder. If you work with this system that is not even numbers, you might not be able to achieve adequate balance inside of your design. I hope that is clear. Or am I uh, being too technical now? Than my audience. Uh, okay, let me read some comments. Say, is it possible to have design that is good design using properly aligned and not necessarily having a balance in a design? Now, of course, if we take a look at the entire um, design principle, they work hand in hand. In fact, there is some principle that for you to to to, to satisfy a certain principle, you automatically satisfy another principle, right? So you can have a properly aligned element design and yet it is not balanced, right? At the same time, again, you need to solve that balance issue. That is a clear example of what I just did here, right? In this, um, our example that we have here, um, under this example here, this design now, right, is good to go. I cannot say, okay, I've designed a, a, minimalist, a, a minimalist design Minimal design is a design trend, of course, and this is a perfect design, actually, right? But as a designer that I am, and I also want to create more visually appealing design, I'll take a look at it and say, no, Sam, something is still missing in this design. What, what can I add to this design that will make it balanced? Is, is it that the design is too empty? Of course, I want it to be empty because it's a minimal design, but yet I could still do something. Okay, that is why I created this stuff. Now, this text now is not doing any job. The main, the major text here that is important in this particular one is this design of dream home and this body to explore collection. And the aim of this text beneath it is just to create more balance in the euro section. Now, I could not create more effigy or paparazzi to this particular design by making this stuff scroll vertically during my prototype and it will look like a macro effect. I don't know if you guys know what the macro effect is. So if I'm prototyping this, if I if I move towards interaction now, I cannot make this stuff be scrolling to, to the left and to the just like those uh, news. If you are watching a uh, CNN, all those things that I used to scroll beneath it, right? I could do that like that to this particular design, just to make it small, to add a little bit more style to it, to add a little bit more art to the design. At the same time, the design will be what more balanced, right? Please let me mute your mic if your mic is not muted. What do we look out for in a design set, set up so we are able to spot errors or designs that are too simple? Of course, all of these things. Yeah, all of it. So we have about 10 basic design principles. You have to look out for everything. You have to look out for alignment. You have to look out for contrast. You have to look out for balance. And the fourth one too, you have to look out for emphasis. Emphasis is another one. So emphasis is, you have to look out for the all design principles. So number four, the four principle emphasis. Emphasis is the part of the design that catches the viewer's attention. Usually the designer will make one area stand out by contrasting it with other areas. The area could be different in size, color, texture, shape, etc. Of course, they're telling you how you can create emphasis, right? Now, what, is simply, what emphasis simply means, if you're taking a look at all of these dots that is by the side of this particular slide, there is one particular dot that catches your attention more, that you will see first. And tell me, what is the color of that particular dot? Is it the gray or the orange dot? Is it the gray or the orange dot? Is it the gray or the orange dot? The orange dot, you see the orange dots first, right? Perfect. So now just by changing one color, I have created an emphasis on that particular uh, design element. Just by making every other element one color and make, just, and make one separate from others, I have drawn the user attention to that particular element. So in design, we use emphasis to create what? We use color to create emphasis. We use size. If all of this stuff have the same size, and this only this orange dot is the same gray, but it's bigger, the eye will capture it first. Remember, 
when users are going through designs, they just capture what they just um, they see what you want them to see. So as a designer, you use emphasis to make them see what you want them to see. All right. So um, how do we do this? We do this when we are implementing what's called to action. Right. We do this when while we are implementing call to action. Uh, okay, there is no really. Okay, let me take a look at this design here and see if there is a point where I um, um, uh, um, intentionally implemented emphasis. All right. So, in terms of color, so let's take a look at this um, cut check, check, check our shape. Now, in terms of color, there is one particular color that your eyes will be drawn to. And this is, is this particular button that is saying proceed to check out, right? So you will not be able to, you will not find that particular stuff. It makes your, your design more accessible, right? It makes your design more accessible. So when you take a look at this particular page, for example, to find the proceed to check out button will be easy for you to find because it is more accessible because of those, that particular color that is separate from others, right? Same as well, when you come to this particular section where we have the checkout section as well, everything is the same color apart from the pain and button. So because the pain and button is orange, the user will definitely see it. But if I made the pain and button white, right, the user will find it difficult to notice, okay, there is a separate button here that I want the user to see. So emphasis will help us to draw the user attention. And we could implement it by changing the color of that particular element that we want the user to see. We could implement it by increasing the size to make it a little bit bigger than other elements on that particular interface. Then the user attention will be drawn to that particular object more compared to the others. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear, guys? All right. Very clear. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, the next one is proportion, right? Of course, I just dropped this image here to signify proportion, how I implemented proportion by creating this particular product slider, right? You see proportion. Proportion refers to the relationship between objects with reference to their size and visual weight. Larger elements tends to be seen as more important. So now what you're seeing here, in terms of image, you are seeing a total of six different images, right? You are seeing six different images, but your, your attention will be drawn to one more because of it is bigger. That's this one. I know that it is bigger. It is bigger according to proportion. No, something could be bigger, but it could be out of proportion. And it could be bigger and it could be according to the proportion. So even when you're increasing it, you want to increase it according to proportion. What do I mean by it's bigger according to proportion? All of these four elements now is the same thing. If you add them together with their quarter spacing, it will give you the same width as this particular element there. So it is not just bigger. It is bigger according to what proportion. Now let's let's take a look at it in the actual design where it's been implemented. Now this is where it's been implemented. So look at this stuff now. It is bigger according to proportion. So it's not be outside a particular design, right? It's implemented on the product page of this particular e-commerce application. Now if you take a look at this particular lady here, this whole area and this whole area, the the product detail and the product slide have to balance. So you see, I want it to balance, and I also want this particular slide to also be bigger according to proportion. So I have to put all of these sizes into perspective while actually creating this design. Because if this image is smaller, this particular area will be looking a little bit much more empty. And I'll be, I'll, and I'll be looking at design, something is wrong about this particular design. It's because of this particular slider, it's not big according to what's proportion. So I'm increasing the size, and I want to increase the size according to proportion. Two proportion I'm trying to meet here: the size of the thumbnails, and also the proportion of the right side, um, um, the right column as well, so that the right column and the left column will balance. Because on the left column I have my image sliders, or my, or my product sliders. Well, on the right column I have my product details. That tell me about the, the product, the return policy, the name of the product, the price, and of course you could see me bringing emphasis to the, the to the Name um, instead of the name of the, the product, which is Nike Sport, Sport, Sportswear, I'm using contrast and emphasis to bring more attention to the price of this particular product. So, in other words, you're saying $40. In other words, I'm telling that, okay, the price of this particular product is more important than the name of the product, which is Nike Sportswear. So, the name of the product is smaller compared to the price of the product that becomes $40. I'm telling that, look, 
users care more about the price of the product than they care about the name of the product. They are going to see, they want to see the name of the product, their eye will intentionally search for it. But I want them to see the image of the product and the price of the product. Then if they want to look for the name of the product, then they will now intentionally search for it. They want to read about the product, they will intentionally what? Search for it, right? So that's just it. Then I have my pain, my buy now button, of course. And it's also showing them now. If you take a look at this buy now button and this variation here, it is conflicting. Because I have several colors here, and I have this binary button also a color. I could now say, okay, my variation color is also completely with my binary color. I might now start thinking, okay, if I want to make it design better, how do I ensure that my variation color does not conflict with my binary color? Should I increase my binary button to be much more bigger? Should I a little bit reduce my variation colors, or should I put it in some way that will also make it correct? So I could further correct this design to ensure that the color of my variation does not conflict with my binary. Um, button because my binary button is also a very important button uh, 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 um, in this particular design. So when you're thinking about proportion, you also want to create balance in it. So this is where we have two or three design princip principles coming together to form a more quality design. So we are looking at proportion, we are looking at balance at the same time, we are looking at emphasis at the same time, we are looking at what alignment. You could see me join this particular rule to ensure that everything on this particular page is well aligned. Right, so I want to ensure that okay, everything on this particular area is aligned the fashion, the next sportswear, the price, the text, the variation, everything they are offering one particular alignment, right? And I will do that simply by drawing the wood to ensure that everything is well aligned at the end of the day, right? So that is alignment for you. Is that clear, guys? And that is proportion for you too, as well. So while designing. One of these principles is not important than the other. Alignment is not important than balance. Balance is not important than emphasis. Emphasis is not important than proportion. Knowing how to use them together makes you a better visual or UI designer. So we still have five more to go before we call it a day. So let me proceed real fast. Now, what's the time? Wow, it's already nine. Let me proceed real fast. So the second one that I have there is hierarchy. So hierarchy is also the level of importance and you can implement hierarchy in terms of color and in terms of size. I think that hierarchy and emphasis and emphasis are similar because they achieve almost the same results. Emphasis helps you to draw, to get the user attention. And in, in most cases, we use color to do that. Why hierarchy, when you see a group of information, you tell which one is more important than the other. If you take a look at these simple cards here, you could see that, in this, in this second one, the, this, the headline and the description text are the same size. So be, because of that, you don't really know which one is more important. Is the headline more important than the description or the description more important than the headline? You will not know. But because the, the, this particular sample headline is bigger inside of the first card, of course, you know that, okay, I'm going to read the sample headline and I'll not give it there reading about reading the description, right? So hierarchy. So hierarchy is another design principle. Of course, you could see me implementing hierarchy and showing that, okay, I want you to see the price of the product than even the name of the product. In terms of um, this area too, you could also see me implementing hierarchy in terms of the actual price of the product and the supposed discounted price of the product. So the product actual price is $7, but we are selling it for $5, right? So I use hierarchy to ensure that that particular $7 is gray, and why the main $5 is more darker, showing that, okay, the $5 is more important than the $7. I'm using hierarchy to do that as well, right? So you can actually use hierarchy to say, okay, which particular thing inside of your visual design is more important than the other, right? So that's what hierarchy does for us. I think hierarchy is one of the most basic design principles that almost everybody know without you telling them. Now, the next design principle that we have is what, is what we call repetition. Now, repetition, it helps you satisfy another principle that we are going to talk about tomorrow, which is called the principle of what? Consistency. Repetition. Repetition allows you to satisfy another principle again that is called reading. So what is repetition? Repetition, reinf repetition reinforces an idea or perception. It can be done by using the same format for a group of elements like headers or cards. You're using the same color or images. Repetition generally creates unity in a design without any extra effort on the part of the designer. You see, 
Repetition allows us to achieve another principle called unity. You see how this, um, these principles are interwoven, right? In such a way that um, um, they just make things um, amazing for us as designers. So let's take a look at repetition where I actually implemented repetition in this particular design. Now, if you take a look at this design clearly enough, you will realize that repetition is being implemented in several places. Now, let's start from this area. Look at the top, look at the category bar. All of the, all of the category have a rule that have dark and orange rule. And you could see me repeating the same orange color, making my design um, 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 learnable, right? You could see me repeating the same orange rule here too as well. So across several pages, I'm repeating the same thing in all of my subhead, the subcategories. I have that same rule there as well. In the product too, I have that same rule there as well. Then if you move from page to page, you will see that same thing also following each other. That's not the only thing I, repeat, I, 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 I repeated. And that I also repeated to, I also repeated the corner radius. You realize that everything in this particular design have what corner radius also allowed me to achieve consistency. I'm also going to talk about consistency tomorrow again. So there's a corner radius on this particular card. Is that the product card too or as well? There's also a corner radius. So because of that, the button also have the corner radius too as well. And um, so I will keep repeating corner radius across all of my design because I've started with what corner radius, right? So when I come over here, even this particular image, I just an image on its own. I also have to add corner radius to it as well to also have that particular design. This particular um tab bar here too as well. I also under my shopping category I also have to add corner radius there too as well, right? So everything I I I, I did in this particular design, I have to ensure that there is always corner radius there by repeating that same thing over and over and over again across the entire design. I'm not just only satisfying the principle of repetition, I'm also satisfying the principle of unity and at the same time satisfying the principle of what consistency. So we have three more to go before we call it a day. So we have white space. Wow, white space is one of the biggest challenge for people that are still just starting their design, right? White space is one of like the biggest challenge that we have out there for people that are just starting out, right? So I believe we are still understanding that of repetition. So I will, so I will keep going. I will keep going over. And I will keep going again. So what's the next one? White space. So let's take a look at white space. So white space gives our design breathing, breathing, uh, allow our design to breathe. So white space, also known as negative space, uh, technic technically, white space and negative space in graphic design is not the same thing, no, actually, right? White space and negative space, technically, in graphic design is not the same thing. So let me just digress a little bit. Let me explain white space to you guys. Um, let me explain negative space. White space is any space inside of your design that does not mean anything, but negative space is a white space that means something. So um, let me let me show you guys. Let me show you FedEx logo that 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 use white space. FedEx FedEx logo. Let's ask for FedEx logo. I want to show you guys something. Now take a look at this particular logo very well. The logo makes use of negative space. In graphics, I will call it negative space. Between the E and the X, there is a shape that the space form, and that shape form the shape of an arrow, right? So this shape of an arrow is a what negative space. Okay, take a look at it. They also, um, um, so negative space in graphic design is a space that graphic designers create intentionally to pass hidden information. It's an intentional space created by graphic designer to pass hidden in, in information, right? You could see the negative space here, right? So I think they are trying to point down to it. There's, there's another um, uh, hidden arrow. So there's another company again in their logo design that also implemented the same um, negative space thing in logo design. Most graphic designer basically use it more in logo design. Um, go Kada. Uh, if you're a Nigerian, you should know Go Kada. Go Kada. Go Kada is another logo. All right, take a look at these guys now. For you to see the negative space that the designer did in this G, you have to turn the logo. You see that the G is an helmet. And the space inside the G is somebody that is wearing an, a, a helmet. Can you guys see that? So this space in here is not just an ordinary space for the sake of space. It's for the sake of to create a negative space 
that show you that somebody is wearing a uh, um, helmet, just like one of the major information that their brand is trying to pass across. You can see helmets there that, you're, that the bike man is wearing to pass across safety and dress. So they make the jeep look at, like a an helmet, but of a human being, of a, the head of a human being inside that particular helmet that forms this particular. So this kind of approach is called negative space, not necessarily white space, but in as a UI designer, negative space and white space might mean the same thing for you. But as a graphic designer, negative space and white space are not necessarily the same thing. I hope that is understood. I just let me just clear the air there a little bit. So um, um, uh, that being said, let me go back to my, my uh, white space uh, explanation. So white space, also known as negative space, which is not completely true, is empty space around the content and functional elements of a page. The basic role of white space is to let your design breathe, right? By reducing the amount of text and functional element that users see at once. This is important for making a design uncluttered as well as making various elements stand out. Of course, if you take a look at our example here that I shared, is in this particular design. In fact, for you to achieve a, a minimalistic design, you have to know how to use white space a lot. And I have principles for white space that I may not have enough time to share, but I'll just share it verbally without really, really designing and implementing, implementing it. For spacing, instead of your design, we have two types of spacing. We have the padding and we have the margin. The padding is the space inside the element. Why the margin is the space outside the element. And when you're working with columns, for example, let me go to this particular design and look for where I implemented it. So when you're working with columns, first something like this now, grid, not columns, grid. This is a product grid. Now you want to ensure that the vertical space is equal to the horizontal space. If the vertical space is not equal to the horizontal space, the design will not be what balance. You see, you can also implement this principle of spacing for you to achieve balance in your design. I know who got that. If you got that, drop a comment, drop a comment, drop a comment. Let me let me see if you guys got it. If the horizontal space in your grid is not equal to the vertical space in your grid, you might not achieve balance. Who got it? Is that clear, guys? All right, all right, all right, all right. So while you are designing, you want to uh, um, um, look out for that. Not just that alone. If I'm designing this particular card, imagine this spot now is touching the edge of this card. Now, of course, I will not blame anybody. Uh, as you design, you, you improve. That was the truth. While you're starting, you might be designing anything, but as you design, improve. But when you learn design principle, it helps you improve faster. Right, because you now know the principle. Take a look at this particular card now. Imagine that this spot is touching the edge of this particular card. It will not be beautiful, right? That is because I do not implement padding. Now, for me to implement padding, I have to think now. The spacing between this spot and this image here have to be equal with the spacing between this spot and this image here. Okay, in fact, for me to clearly explain this for you guys to understand, let me design this stuff from scratch. I'll just do that in like in a minute. So this is what I'm trying to say. Auto layout and the rest will help you achieve. That's why I love to use a uh, frame a lot. You hardly see me use rectangle. I'm a frame person. You hardly see me use rectangle. So this is what I'm trying to say. So let me let me write a sample text here. Oh, this text is too big. Let's just call this one sample. Let me reduce the size of the text. This is one of the most biggest texts you ever see. So let me let me let me zoom let me zoom a bit. So so now. If I drag this text, if I do something like this, do you know this? What I just did now is not correct. Why? Can you guys tell me why? In terms of principle of spacing, this is not correct. Who will tell me why? Let me let me read the comment. Who will tell me why? Who will tell me why? Tell me here. Tell me why it's not correct. Probably I'll make it a, a, a post about this. Not vertically, not aligned both vertically. They are not the same. That's why it's not correct. 
So now, for me to correct this, this, this simple thing, I need to ensure that I use alternate. See, here is 18. The top one is 18, while here is 16. So all I need to do, I need to ensure. So one thing I need to do, if if you if, if, if move it like this, like to cross, so if I hold shift and I say one, two, this 20, one, two, this 20. So now, if you check it now like this, now you see now, now this is what absolutely correct. So you want to ensure that whatever space in it, so you don't want to do like this. Like this too is not correct. You might look as, ah, I'm not really saying, but it's not correct because if you check it, you see that one is 30, why one is 10, why one, one is 20, right? So you want to ensure that inside a car, right, you have this, the right spacing as well. Now, if you take a look at this particular design here, you could see that this, this spacing that I gave from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from this button to this particular card, then if you now go around, they are all equal, they are all correct. And of course, if you were designing instead of Figma, one of the best ways to achieve it at ease is using what? Auto layout to actually specify the spacing that you want, of course. Now, another principle of spacing again is the spacing between, um, is the spacing between uh, 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 um, sections instead of your design. Now, let me use the design to explain. Is the spacing between sections. So let me use this. Let me come probably to the home page or something. It's coming out. It's coming out. Okay. Let's take a look at this at home page. It could be the spacing between sections. So if I click here now, and I do, I do here, you see, this is hundred. Aha. This is hundred. So I'm, I'm, I'm not just using my eye. I actually ensure that everything have that exact space. This is hundred. So now. So the spacing between section, I want to maintain the same space. This is what, 100. Now the spacing between column, the gutter spacing, this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. Despite the fact that this one is four, this is also the same, this is also the same. I, I don't know if you guys are understanding, right? So all of this spacing just have to work for you to create a more balanced design, right? So I, 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 believe, I believe we are getting that particular point, right? I believe we are getting that particular point. If you're getting it, uh, just let me know. I'm reading the chat. Just let me know. I'm always reading the chat. I always go back to read the chat. Just let me know. Yes, sir. Well understood. Yup. Ba ba ba. Okay, let's go. We have two more to cover. That we'll call it a day. The, of course, this one is unity. So unity and repetition. They are almost the same thing. Unity is the principle of design that unifies all other principles within a piece of work. Allowing each individual element to coexist with one another um, to form an aesthetically pleasing design. Unity also defines consistency across the design. Unity is what I explained before. Once you start using corner regions, you will not use border regions again. I'll give you guys an example. Let me explain it better. Um, I'll give you something now. If I start my design, and you know that there are three types of buttons. My bot your button could be like this, right? Which is, this one I, is, uh, I, I used to call it like sharp edge button. Your button could be like this. This one, I, I call it rounded edge button. Let me give you like 10. So this kind of button now is called rounded edge button. Then there's another type of button again that I love to call, uh, this one is capsule. Oh, this is too small. Okay. This other kind of button is called what? Capsule shape button, right? So these are three different kind of buttons, shape of button that you can use inside of your design, right? All the buttons that you see most in most sites comes in this format. Of course, you can still stylize your buttons a different way, blah, blah, blah. And then, but most buttons that you see um, in any web or mobile application is either it's a sharp edge button or a rounded edge button or a capsule shape button. Now, this is what I'm trying to say. If you start to use a capsule shape button and you want to draw a card inside of your design, and in your card, the card now is now what a sharp edge button. This, this card and this button do not go together. They don't go together. So there is no unity. So because of there is no unity, there is no consistency. So I can say your design is not what correct. Because of the button cannot be capsule shape and this card will look like this. In fact, this card cannot even look like this. This card cannot look, if it look like this, like this and this one go together, does not go with the capsule shape button. How do I know? If I bring this capsule shape button on top of this, let me, let me make this stuff more visible. Let me make it a red. 
if I bring the camera shape button on top of this and I reduce the height, right? You see that it won't go. You see, if there's a button inside of this card now, it doesn't go. For me to make this top go, this top has to be more, more, the rounded edge has to be more like 20 or so for it now, if can for it now to now move, will now move to, to now unify with the button inside of it, right? So the edge has to be more rounded to fit with the capsule shape button. Do you see that? If not, it will not go in terms of unity. So you want to also observe that as well. And you could see that our uh, logics are according to your entire design to ensure that different elements in your design, they coexist together, right? What was this one? Uh, to ensure that they coexist together. If not, they will not work. So another way again, um, if you're using um, input, once you start your button like this, for example, right? If this is your button, you cannot go and start creating form and your form will not look like this. And you cannot say, type your email address here. Your input cannot look like this. Your form will have to be curved or this for it to blend. So now, if you take a look at this design that I have here, because I already started with this edge shape button, that's why my card for my text have to be more rounded. And when I come to creating the forms, I'm not showing you the decisions, all of this stuff, all of these um, decisions, uh uh didn't just happen on their own i want to show you where i feel the where i created the form show you that okay how the input had to look like so uh i guess this is it is where the form is so because of that button so the form input now have to also be what capsule if not it will not suit the shape of the button so it will not be well unified across the entire design. I believe this is understood now. We're almost done. Just one more to go. I hope this is understood as well. I hope it's understood. All right. One more to go. One more to go. One more to go. Then I'll give you guys assignments for tomorrow. <laughs> then tomorrow we end the class. So um, variety is the last one uh, that we have here. So variety refers to how artists and designers add complexity and visual interest to their work. Um, it can be created. It can be created via color, typography, images, etc. It can prevent design from becoming monotonous or boring. Now, the truth is, when you when all your designs are well unified, there is no little changes somewhere. Your design might become boring because of um, that. So. What, one of the ways we solve boring design is by what creating what's variety. Now, of course, I don't really have a perfect example of my design where I really implemented variety. But if you take a look at these two things here, you could see that the unity in these things is the same color, but the varieties that they have different sizes, right? All of these dots is the same color, but the variety, of course, there's a saying that says variety is the spice of life, right? So variety is different sizes. This one now, the unity is valid, they have the same size. But the variety world is the different colors as well. So variety is when um, you change one aspect of the design intentionally so that it will call attention. The user, the user now that is already used to, there's a way the brain works, human psychology works. When they're already used to a certain pattern of your design, then if you come somewhere else and just change only that particular part, right, the user will quickly notice that because of it is not um, um, the same with other parts of the design. Right, so you can also use variety to do that as well. Then um, the just start principle of design. So the just start principle was developed in the 1920s by German um, um, psychologists when they were studying human perception and how the human brain makes other out of chaos. Instead of saying these things separate com um, components, humans will look for patterns and structure and make an image. This is why designers such as UX, UI designers use the Gestalt principle to make the experience they are designing intuitive and aesthetically pleasing for user. Now, the reason why I added this particular principle of design, just for us to understand that, okay, design principle are not just limited to the 10 basic design principles that we've covered so far. So there is this other group of principles that I'm not like, I don't really want to like bake um, uh, and break it down. So I will leave this one to you guys as an assignment. You want to go out there, go good stuff on the digital principle of design and how you can actually implement set of your UI 
And some of the things that you want to see here that we also must have spoken of indirectly are principles such as proximity. Proximity defines the closeness of your elements with one another, right? So we have proximity, we have closure. For example, proximity now, if elements are separated from one another, from one another, they, they, they are regarded as separate elements. But if the space in between them are closed, they will be regarded as what? Same elements, right? That's what, so we use proximity to, to define the, sep, the difference between one section of a design and another section of another design. There's another, there's another design principle called closure, which is almost um, um, similar to as well. Closure, there's another principle called um, um, similarity, continuity, perception, organization, symmetry, common region. Focal point is very, very good as well. Figure and ground. Figure and ground in terms of do your design. When you're, figure and ground, you see that in terms of um, when you're implementing on those Bauhaus design trends, and then um, uh, what they call them geometry designs, right? You might also want to see some of these things as well. So on your own, you want to probably basically try to further study on this design, this um design principle. Why are design principle important? Design principle ensure that we come up with the best design, one of the best um, um pleasing design. If you can come up with the best pleasing design, um, your design will have good experience. That's how I see it. I used to tell people that um, the best designs are not designs that are necessarily too beautiful. Best designs are design that is accessible to the user. Once your user starts finding something and they cannot see it, your design is flawed, right? So best design are not necessarily beautiful designs, but best design and a very good design are design that are accessible and useful to that particular user. And implementing um, design, some of these design principles or all of the design principles while designing will improve, it will improve your design and can actually 10x your UI design game. Now, talking about tomorrow class, what will we be covering tomorrow class? I will go in depth to cover other amazing stuff in tomorrow's class. So let me just give you guys a snippet. I'll be covering UI elements, design principle, not necessarily principle, but I'll also call them guidelines that will enable us to design amazing stuff. So in our tomorrow class, so when you join tomorrow, these are the things that you should be expecting to learn. I already have the slide there. I was talking about buttons, better way to create buttons. I was talking about uh, um, cards and uh, different principles of buttons, of course. I will also be talking about color theory. Probably I find it difficult to combine colors. I'm talking about color theory. I'm talking about iconography. I'm talking about how to select the right image, of course. And uh, let me give you, a, let me give you just, let me just give you guys a snippet of the image as a thriller for tomorrow class. Now. If you take a look at this design, and let me come over here. Let me just, this one is like, a, you know, like, you know, like when you finish one episode now, they will now show you um, this, uh, the next, what you will learn or what you watch in the next episode so that you will look forward to that episode. That's what I want to do now with this image. So now when you're designing stuff, the kind of image that you choose may actually make or my your design totally. Now look at this image. The reason why I went to Unsplash, I got this image from Unsplash. When I went to Unsplash, I said this particular image is because of one particular thing. I know that my image, I know that my primary color that I'm trying to portray is yellow. For that design to have this yellow hue, right? I have to show that my image have a touch of that particular color. Now, if you think this image is not selected intentionally, uh, 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 let's take it off. I use another image. Now, just imagine this is the image I use now. Of course, it's a very beautiful image high quality image, but there's no touch of yellow in that particular image. Just because there's no touch of yellow in that particular image, you could see that this image is off from my design, making my design looking weird, start, my design will start looking weird. Two or four guys. You see, so tomorrow I will show you guys how to search for, I call it the image. See, this is some of the things I will share tomorrow. They're not necessarily principle per se. These things are techniques. They are tricks, let me call it. So I'll just be showing you guys tricks on, on how to come up with, when you're working on your design element, how to add like create soft shadows, little, little tricks here and there. So you could see that here, just, so that means whenever I'm looking for, I'm not just looking for a beautiful image, I'm looking for an image that has the touch of my color. So the moment I add an image that I have, I just saw this yellow because a path. This is the image. You have the touch of the color I'm looking for. So I will show you guys how to search platform to go, the right keyword to use when searching for images that you want to add to your design to pop your design more so that 
uh, and the design will be more beautiful, right? So you don't just add any image. I've seen so many designers, amazing layouts, amazing alignment, amazing balance, but what bad choice of image. Once you have battles of image, it can actually destroy your effort of achieving a beautiful design. As you can see, just changing this image to another image, I have destroyed this particular design. And just adding the right image, I've made this design uh, 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 much more better in terms of UI there. So I have several selection here, image that tells story. So see, in fact, this image is like one of my best, right? So image selection, we're talking about, tomorrow we'll also be talking about shadows, right? I've seen so many beginners made, uh, 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 um, um, and apply shadows wrongly by creating thick, dark shadow. So I will show you a trick on how to uh, achieve amazing shadow. Also how to use shadow to create several effects, something like this that you have here and also other kind of amazing things that you can create with your shadows as well. I'll also be talking about layouts and grid. Of course, I already addressed it a little bit in this class. I'll also be talking about cards, how to create right cards and the card design. I'll also be covering design trends. We'll be talking about illustrative design, card design, 3D design, amorphic design, glassmorphism, retro design, minimalist design, um, glassmorphism, dark theme, and some of the final word I'll give to you guys tomorrow. So this is what we'll be covering tomorrow. So if you miss tomorrow class, this is what you will miss. If you don't miss tomorrow class, if you attend tomorrow class, this is what you're going to gain. So at this particular point in time, I'm done with my slide. I'm going to stop to share and I will give room for questions and uh, we'll end um, the session um, for today. So any final question anybody want to ask me, then we'll end for today. They'll meet again tomorrow by 8 p.m. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll think about that. I'll tell you why else I'll think about that. Um, the, this material that I'm using right now, right? You could see that it's all Nedi and Nedi materials, right? So Nedi has a course on UI UX and even the design I've been using to, um, that I've been using as, as example, right? It's a total course that moved from project brief to case study that is a complete UX. Probably I will show it to you guys. There's a complete UX that from project brief user research, user personal, those stuff, down to the down to case study level and hosting it on Behance, right? So it's it's a premium material, but I'm just, I, I just decided to use the design principle part of it. And so, okay, let me just teach it out for you guys as free out of kind gestures. So, so um, I might not share this slide and make it available public because people are actually paying for it. As we speak right now, some of the people on this particular live session, have probably paid for this particular material. And they'll be wondering why is this guy even teaching this stuff for free as well. But it's part of it's, it's a paid material actually. I hope that makes sense to you. Just in case I just in case the material is not shared. So you want so you want so you want us to be, to be taking down notes and probably be taking screenshot or something. But uh, the possibility of me sharing the material is actually five percent out of 100. That is possible. So any other question? Yeah, go ahead. All right. All right, thank you so much. Um, you, you, you asked a very beautiful question. I have a free resource from our premium course for that, that you can actually just go straight to YouTube and watch right now. Um, uh, I will show it to you. 
Um, it's called um, design system. So what you're asking for is not design principle. You're asking for design system. Let me let me try and see if I can get that video out from our YouTube channel, I'm sorry. I just, the, the truth is I, I, I was trying to go through, so I said this particular project called open, this open source project. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys. And let me, let me just permit me to share my screen because of this question, right? So someone just asked me, just in case you, didn't, you guys didn't hear the question, someone just asked me that, um, um, how do we ensure that um, probably anybody that's inheriting the design or the developers uh, will be able to know that, okay, this is the robust of the bottom, blah, 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 and the rest. So my answer to that particular question is that it is not a principle thing. So design principle is basically um, creating um, uh, appealing UI. As I said, design principle is also, it's, it's originated from graphic design because graphic design is also visual design. So basically just like a principle of visual design. Like if, you do, if you Google design principle right now, as you speak, most of the materials that you're going to see on design principle will be talking about graphic design, not UI design. So, but that being said, um, so I have, something that will address that particular question. I'll provide answer to that particular question and I will share it with you. And I also have created a video on it that is also free that you can watch on YouTube. I did the video myself. So let's search for this design system, design system. Let me just put NetGI in front. I did this, I, I uploaded this video like two weeks ago uh, uh, for an open design project, both coding and stuff that I wanted to do. I said this project like a month or two ago, I created a Twitter community for it. Many uh, UI designer volunteered, but I now realized that most of them, most of the, I, have a, I had about 100 and something UI designer that volunteered, that was about two months ago, that is still inside the WhatsApp group right now as we speak. But I realized that most of them, actually they are like 99% of them, they are beginners, right? So it was difficult for me to like mentor them or see them through designing those stuff. Then I just like pause up Pascal design and, that was that um, open source project and focus on other things that, that I'm doing offline. Then two weeks ago, I just said, okay, look, let me do something for these guys. I know that most of them, they actually really want to work. They want to learn, but they are beginners. We can't actually work on open source projects together like this. I said, okay, look, let me actually just create a video so they can learn with it. So I did this particular video. So this video covers design system. So if you're thinking about design system, uh, you want to learn how to create buttons, so on and so forth. You want to watch this particular video? Um, I did it two parts. I, if I have, if I have, a, if I have, a, what's the word? If I have time, I'm a very busy person in a way. Without bragging, if I have time, I will do the third part. I hope I have. I I pray I have time and motivation to do it as well. Not just only time, motivation too is also important, right? So if I have time and motivation, I will do the part three. So in my part one, I covered color, typography, spacing, grid, layout. I think everybody that is just starting their design career should actually watch these two videos at least, though it's not complete. But if I have time, I pray that I will continue it as well. I covered grid, I covered shadows, I covered um, icons and so on and so forth. So this is what we want to put in place so that um, even the developers can use that to uh, continue design and when you are done with the project, these are some of the things that you submit. So I'll just copy this particular link now. I will share it um, in the chat section so that everybody can also have access to it as well. Uh, uh, just in case you guys also want to have access to that video too. I'll share it there. Then it's two parts. The second part I cover buttons. So let's take a look at what I did inside of the project, inside of the stuff. So just in case you want to watch it so it's called easy to code i believe this is it so the the, the open up is supposed to be easy to code but unfortunately most of the people that volunteered for the project are actually beginners so i, I would, would do me to them to do this to do something else blah blah so it was actually difficult for me and i, I wasn't paid for it too so <laughs> it's something i was just doing to like add my own quarter to the growth of the tech community, but you know, those kind of things. I was a little bit frustrated at that particular point. That was about two months ago. So this is one of the ways I choose to treat my frustration by, okay, just create the materials for them, let them watch and learn instead of actually practicing. Because the truth is, the truth is if you don't, you can't do what, you can't give what you don't have. So even if you join an open source project, an open source design project like this, you don't know it, you can't still give it. And you just have to go back to, to learn it. 
So I did this stuff. I did atoms. I was using atomic design uh, system framework where we have atoms, molecules. But this is where chemistry meets design. So if, if you know what, is, what atom is, molecule, organisms, and all those stuff, this is where we bring chemistry into UI design. Don't be scared. It's not hard. But we just use that terminology. So we have atoms, we have molecules, we have organisms, and so on and so forth. So I did colors. I showed different. Most of these things I did, they're actually using our plugins. I did colors, did typography, did this, cover buttons. I believe this is what you're asking of. So I cover buttons. So, of course, my buttons, you can see different type of buttons. We have the solid, we have outline, we have text. I did all of this stuff in those videos. They're all available on YouTube for free. It's just for you to bring your time and watch it, right? So I did buttons, I covered buttons. So these are the different states. You can see the default state of the buttons, the hover state, the active state, the focus state, the disabled state. You want to have icon left, right? one, one half icon right, in such a way that while you are designing, if, so this is like my documentation for the project. So I want to start a new project. I have to first and foremost come up with a design system before I continue the project. So if I bring this button outside here now, I can switch this button to anything I feel like switching it to, right? So this, I have both large and so under my property here, I can say, I want solid button. I want the, the label to be sign up. So I will just put my sign up here. Figma is a very beautiful tool. I'm an XD guy. All of a sudden I switch to Figma because of people want me to switch. So I have no icon. I can say, I want my icon to be shown by the left side of the icon. This is the icon here. I can also choose to change the icon all from here to something else, let's say like user or so. And um, I could just do that here as well. So it's an amazing stuff. All of this stuff is there. If I want the hover state under the state, I can change it to the hover state. I can move it from solid to outline. Okay, if I don't want outline, I can move it to text. So all of this stuff, we are fully done inside the second, the part two of the video. Why the part one? I cover other parts. So in the part three of the video, if I continue, which I'm not giving you guys guarantee that I will continue. If I continue in the part three, I should be covering stuff like input elements for forms, so on and so forth, instead of your design system. So I just hope I continue this particular design system if I'm well motivated to do that. So this is the, this is the answer to your question. So, so any other any, any other question? Any other question? Hope the answer is not too bulky, right? I answer the I answer the question well, right? And the guy that won't answer is not saying anything again. All right, it is what it is. Any other question, guys? Okay, I spoke about balance, Abby. Balance, can I emphasize on balance? Well, um, so, okay, so, so, so if I would say, if I would summarize balance in one word, I would say balance is the ability of merging other principles together. That is just it. Because at the end of the one of, once any of the principles is not met, the question I always ask myself, is the design balance? So if, if other principles are met, the design will balance. That does the truth, right? But um, so for you to really achieve balance, you want to also understand other principles as well. So even if you send your design to me and say, some more, um, I don't design, so let me review the design. The first thing I will look out for is, is design balance. And the text well aligned. If it's a complete project. Okay, tomorrow I'll be talking about how to review your project. There are four steps to review your project. And we're talking about it tomorrow, towards the end. You guys should remind me. In such a way that before you submit that particular project, before you submit that case study to that potential uh, client, to that potential contractor, you can review your own project yourself. And there are four steps to review any project. I'll be sharing it with you guys tomorrow. So as I said, are the texts well aligned? If the texts are not well aligned, the design is not balanced. Is something missing in the design? The design is not well balanced. So. That's just, that's just it about balance, actually. Implementing all other designs, right? But balance on its own, independently, is the weight between the elements inside of your interface. If, just imagine, uh, I don't know what they used to call this thing uh, in physics then, but it's not pendulum. Those, those equilibrium, yes. So balance is equilibrium. No, if, if there is a bench that all, all, that just have a support at the middle and there's one fat guy, by the left, and there's another thin guy. But you realize that because they are not balanced, the fat guy now will go down, and that slim, slim guy 
will just fly up. If that guy weights, will just fling the guy. So with balance, you want to ensure that the weight of the design towards the left and the right are at a, at a state of what? Equilibrium. And this is where physics meets design. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Okay, my screen. Huh? Oh. Oh, yeah. How to achieve it, Abby? Oh, uh, all right, no problem. So um, let me just give a disclaimer. The class is officially over. If you are tired and want to leave, you, you can leave. What I'm doing now is just question and answer. So if you know that you don't have any question and you might not benefit from the answers other people are asking, you can actually do yourself a favor and leave, right? So the class is officially over. So I'm just answering people's questions, but if you stay around, you might learn from their question, even when you don't have your own question. For example, now, someone just asked me that, I spoke about overlay, but how can I achieve overlay? I did not implement it. So I want to further share my screen and show you guys how I achieve overlay. Right. What was the second one again? Remind me. Layout, okay, layout grid. So he also spoke about layout. I also spoke about layout grid, but I didn't show how to what achieve it. So I will do those two things now. So as I said earlier on, the class is officially over. What I'm just doing now is question and answer. You can stick around, learn from other people's question. You can leave and we'll meet tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m. All right? Then we'll start talking about new teams. So back to the answers to your, to your question. Um, let me start with the overlay, right? So to achieve overlay, the way I do it is very simple. So let me just, um, you know what? Let me just recreate um, something. Let me just recreate this, right? I'll, I'll just recreate it. So the first thing I will do, I'm a, I'm a frame person, I'm not a rectangle person, I've said it before. So the first thing I'll do is of course to draw my frame. I'll draw my frame like this, probably give it a border radius of 20 over here. And I'll just leave it like this. So the next thing I want to do now is to add my image to it. So let me just, um, let me copy this image here and come over here and paste it. So that's the image I just pasted it, of course. Then permit me to copy this text to this text to as well. Control C. I'll come over here and I will paste it to. Now, so this is it. I've pasted it, right? So and I look at the design. Oh my God, something is wrong about the design. Um, um, the contrast is not okay. Let me correct the design. So this is how I will achieve my overlay. The first one I will use a rectangle to do that. So I'll click on rectangle over here. I'll just draw it across the design. Of course, I'll show that the rectangle is inside this particular frame, of course. Sometimes when you draw something, um, come here, let me cut it. You want to ensure that you draw the rectangle inside the frame. Aha, it's inside the frame now. So I'll just draw it. It could be outside, of course, the frame has keeping stuff. So I'll draw it like this. So you could see the rectangle, then I will just, Look at my look at this particular layer, my layer. So it's on top of this text. I'll bring it down by the layer so that the text will show. But the rectangle should cover the image, right? So the rectangle is covering the image, but the text on top of the rectangle. So it depends on the color of the valley, right? So the color I use here is red, it's black. So I'll just give it full black. Then over here, you will see the transparency, just to reduce the transparency. So the more you reduce it, the more the it get darker or something. So you just leave it as your own um, where you think that it's light. But because it, it is light now, so I'll just change the text to white. So I'll just change the text to white. So the text will show now. So that is how um, that is how I implement the overlay, right? So just by placing a rectangle on top of the image itself, where I want the rectangle to be, and I would um, do that. So if it is a red overlay I want to achieve, so I can just make it any color of overlay you can achieve it. It depends on your design. If it is yellow valley, 
Just any, even if it's blue, anyhow, anyone that you want to achieve, you can actually achieve it. Just give, just give it any color. All right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Overly. Yeah. All, all right. No problem. I, yeah, I understand, I understand. Don't worry, let me do that. So now I would, now I want to achieve the second overlay, which is the gradient overlay. So I would also reduce it like this, right? So you could see it here. Uh, I will come over here on that solid, the color here is solid. So I'll click here, I'll change it to linear. So this linear now will give me gradients. You could see that. You see this one, the one that is at the bottom of the whole thing. And um, I could make this one full black. You could see that it's full black now. Here, it's at the bottom of the whole thing here. Then this other one seems, seems to be the one at the top. Let me zoom this top so you see it better. Seems to be the one at the top. Then, um, okay, something is not right. I'm coming. I was just wondering. This text here should be 100, sorry. The entire field should be 100, yeah. So let's go back again. So this one at the top, of course, the gradients now, the transparency should be completely zero. So you see that? So with this now, and I'll now drag it down a bit. So with this now, I have achieved a gradient overlay. Why this other one now? It could be, I could still reduce it if I want to, or I could still leave it at 100, it depends. So it depends on what, on what I'm planning to achieve. I could still leave it like this, it's still perfect, it's still fine. So I can leave it like this. If I leave it like this, now I can further stretch this one. So the more I stretch it, you see the gradient overlay that is going up. Then now this text now, I can come and bring it here and put it down here like this. Then this text now I can put it down here like this. Okay, somebody was uh, not between their mic, Abby. Just making noise. So, uh, so, so this is it. Perfect. I have my gradient overlay, and the gradient is inside here. It's a rectangle gradient. Perfect. So the more you stretch it, the more the overlay covers, right? So you just want to leave it somewhere around here. So now you have your gradient overlay like this. That makes sense, right? Now that's that's overlay. Then, so the so mute your mic. The, 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 the third question or the second question that you ask is the um, layout, right? So for the layout, for the layout, the layout, the layout. So the way you want to achieve layout, it depends. So, um, okay, if you watch this video, if you go to this particular video, under the, the first one, under this show more here, check for layout. Just click it. It will just take you to the layout grid. So I covered layouts here in depth, but let me just talk about it a little bit now. So for me to talk about it a little bit now, so when I just click a frame, it depends on the frame. So, but the video will explain layouts, layouts very well to you. But uh, let me just explain now. So if I select a frame, like a desktop frame now here, so to apply layout, of course, is from this particular area. You click on plus sign here, it'll give you grid, can click here, change it to column. Of course, I always use 12. Then the margin is this around by the edge, I use 88. Then this is it. You have your layout there. You can even save it, save. You can even come over here and say, okay, look, let me save this particular layout, great. Let me call it webinar, right? And click on create. So if I create another frame now, right? Oh, what is it? If I create another frame now and uh, say desktop, and I want to create a layout, I don't need to create it from scratch now. I could just select the, I could just select the frame, go to layout, select, click this stuff, and I'll say webinar. Once I click that, it automatically appears. So that's that's what, how to create layout. But watch the video for detailed understanding of the grid system. Right? We have eight point grid system and four point grid system. So watch the video. You should um you should you should get that all there from the video. More in depth explanation on grid system and layout. So um. You, I, I already shared it, I already shared it. Check the chat section, check the chat section, I already shared it. Or better still, just go to the YouTube channel, just go to YouTube, search for NetDI, design system NetDI. 
design system media should come out as the first one. Design system media or just net or if it's not for design system alone, media might not be ranking because we don't have uh, <clears throat> we don't have like a this thing like that. Our YouTube SEO is not strong. But I'm just creating YouTube for fun for now at least. I say YouTube. Creating videos and uploading it to YouTube for fun. It's not like I'm a YouTuber or something. So yeah. So any other question? Uh, any question? Please mute the mic. Well understood, overlay. Yes, sir. Let's see from Zoom. Go ahead, I can hear you. Go ahead, I can hear you. I can hear you. Go ahead. <laughs> is it no no i don't think using flame affect developers right but in terms of design i don't know why people always ask this frame rectangle thing in terms of design i think frame is quite better it's easier for you to add auto layer to frame compared to rectangle and uh, it's easier for you to resize stuff compared to rectangle so i really personally as some more Right, there is no right answer to this particular question. Right angle of frame. I, I real, I God, to pronounce it really, now that they had me because of my R. All right, so, <laughs> so I hardly use a. Let me change the word. I hardly use a, a, a rectangles. I always use frame. I always probably for stuff like overlay and the rest. You see me use rectangles, right? But I hardly, hardly you, you see me use. Because, but frame is easy to create auto layouts. Frame is easy to do so many things, right? So yeah, I use frame for almost everything. So I will go with frame, but it's not like my answer is correct anyway. And I don't think anybody will say they will go with rectangle to be also correct. I don't think any answer is correct. But based on preference and based on usability, I will go with rectangle any day, any time. So this is exactly 9.59, and um, I'll be ending the uh, um, the class or, Let's just postpone the questions to, to tomorrow. But so, but before I um, postpone the class, I'll love I'll also to show you guys something. So Nedi I has this particular course, just in case you guys are interested to take the course if you're starting your year exam career and um, you would love to have um, a more detailed course, a course that can take you from like scratch to finish. So I have something for you. It's not free, of course. It's paid, but of course, it's not compulsory. Uh, let me let me search for it. It's not compulsory. You pay for it. In Naira, it's sixty thousand Naira, right? It's sixty thousand Naira. So in dollars, should be about a hundred dollars. So, so, so it's the cost of taking your appointment. It's two months. It's self-paced anyway. So if you take the course, you have the you have the privilege to be able to chat me up on WhatsApp. You join the WhatsApp support group. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one live session with me while you're going through the course. You have challenges. So the course will just take you from start to finish, from project brief level to case study level. And uh, of course, I told you guys that this particular two-day class is, is part of the course as well. So that is like video materials for the course. So the course is basically pre-recorded videos. You watch it. Once in every two weeks, we have like live sessions where you ask questions, clarity, clarity sessions. So in the course, I'm going to work on a on a brief. From that brief, it's an e-commerce brief, mobile and uh, web and mobile apps. So in the brief, you have you come up with your US and US. We're going to provide empathy map, user persona, computer map. All of this stuff I've done inside the course is a complete hands-on course. You have user journey map. You have um, site map. You have um, um, user flows, both for web, for, both for mobile, then we we'll also, of course, this, just like the other guy that was asking me for the material, I was saying that I don't think I'll be able to share the material because it is part of the course. So we have, we also covered design system in the course, covered wireframe, so you see like the wireframe, so all of this period that project has done on the course, so this wireframe for the mobile, this wireframe for, for the web, this wireframe for the mobile as well. I was just discussing with some students the other day how to easily create mock-up from Figma using some Figma plugins to create mock-up. This is like for the web tools. Well, let me minimize this so that you guys are going to see. So all of these are from the, the, from the course. And in-depth in course as well, if the videos are open up to 100 videos, 
that is, you, know, you are going to watch, you are going to have your first case study, then you cannot mirror that and have several case study. Then you cannot even join NEDI, NEDI workforce here. We can um, uh, merge you with um, and, um, employers. So this is the design tool as well inside of the course. So a lot of stuff, the principal tool is inside. You get access to this particular Figma file and everything as well. You also join a support WhatsApp group as well. So the course is 60,000 era. Um, after this particular, when I end this particular uh, class now, if you're interested, um, you can send me a private message. I'll just send you a flutter wage link where once you just pay with your card or bank transfer, you have access to the videos on Google Classroom and you can join the support WhatsApp group. So one thing I advise people, people always ask me, Samuel, how can I learn? Well, your example, blah, blah, the rest. I tell them that look, there are three ways you can learn, all right? Or even four ways you can learn. You can learn for absolutely free. You can go on YouTube. Personally, I do that. Of course, you can see that I also upload videos on YouTube. If you go on YouTube, you do good stuff, you see amazing stuff to learn, and it is free. It just costs you all your data. But the only issue is that sometimes you might have um, um, stuff that are not complete. You learn snippets from here, snippets from here. It is not well structured and incomplete. You can see that there as well. And on that way, again, you can learn that it's a little bit cheaper than NDI too as well, in terms of online training, is Udemy. You can learn on Udemy. If you go on Udemy, you can see it costs for like $20. And so on and so forth. Unlike art, it's like a hundred dollar. But the only thing about them, like, them is more structured. But them like, you not be able to ask questions. There is no guidance. There is no mentorship. Unlike with Nedi, I now where there will be guidance, there will be mentorship, and so on and so forth. So, but with them now you not be able to have mentorship and guidance, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it still boils down to can you afford it? So I always tell people if you cannot afford it, keep learning, keep using YouTube, keep attending free webinars like this to pick things here and there to add to what you already know. But if you can afford it, why not pay for it, right? So if you can afford it and you're not paying for it, you're technically doing it yourself. And um, the second thing, again, I would love to discuss, I, if you are in this particular webinar and um, you would, you're actually planning your visa, you want to relocate, and I have something for you tomorrow. So if you join tomorrow, probably I'll, I'll check inside the group. Anybody that is trying to relocate, you're looking for job, not job, you want to leave the country, probably for school or something, you want to leave the country, but you want to have a tech skill. So when you leave the country, you have, you stand a better chance for, uh, to secure a well-paying job out there. So I have so many colleagues, so many friends who, are left, who have left, some are, some are in Canada, some are in England, and, and some of them don't have tech skill. They have to settle down for like all of these caregiver attendants, uh, waitress, cleaner kind of job out there, right? So, but if you have a test that you are really good, good at, you can actually secure a job that can pay you from two thousand dollars to four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars thereabouts, right? And it will it will be easier for you. It will be easier for you over there, right? So, what I want to do, I want to just work with twenty people from now to the ending of the year. That. These 20 people, you must be working on your visa that you want to relocate. If you're not working on your visa I, uh, or you're not planning to relocate, it's not for you. So if you're planning to relocate and working on your visa, I would love to work with 20 people that will do that. Oh, and it's not free. And I want these people to be in Lagos as well because I'm in Lagos, right? I want you to be in Lagos. We'll be meeting subsequently. Um, just 20 people will meet in Lagos. I want them to be in Lagos. We'll meet, we'll learn both. Um, online and physically. So be in the same space, I'll mentor them, I'll set up their project, I'll set up their portfolio, uh, and I'll introduce some amazing platform and amazing sites to them that they can actually go to to get their, to get job right here in Nigeria that, we can, that, that the job can even help them process their visa and so on and so forth, right? So all of those stuff, so I'll do that. I just want to go up with these 20 people. Uh, I'll pick them tomorrow. And it's not free, so if you're thinking it's free, um, uh, <laughs> cancel your mind, right? So that one too, as well, it's not going to be free as well. So those are just the two information I want to pass across. I also share it inside the group on the Telegram channel as well. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for spending your time to um, about two hours from eight to 10 with me today. I hope to see you guys tomorrow that will complete what we've started today as well so um see you guys tomorrow do have a wonderful night rest um eat drink water and sleep well i'll be making a tweet about this please help me retweet it when you see my tweets and help me drop your comments inside the tweet about what you learned tonight 
it's like a morale booster for people like myself that create content like this. And um, so that's that's the way you pay us indirectly, right? So good wonderful, wonderful night rest. Good night. Somebody say thank you, sir. Bye, everyone. Good morning from Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, good morning. This is night here. I'm going to bed. So good night, guys.